silver. But will the Lone Ranger make any gold? Wait till you see the amazing cosplay video we found. It came to us from, I can't believe I'm going to say this, it's kind of cool, a very sneaky zebra. And we'll give you an update on all the news that ain't news yet. Get your costume out. Dress up. It's time for another swanky episode of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Slice of Sci-Fi.com And greetings, everyone. It's time for another slice of sci-fi. I am Michael R. Men and Gay. Oh, I'm Ben Ragginson. Yes, <laughs> Megan. I yeah. I'm Sam Roberts. No, darn it. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. Uh, uh, it's on the I, screen. Read it. It's okay. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Noah. I'm Jedi Noah. <laughs> oh, I'm Megan Zier, and that means that the name for our special guest is not correct, so I won't put it That's up. That's all right. Chuck's been with us all week long. You know about Chuck. <laughs> old hat by now. Mr. Chuck Tomasi from Technorama. He's joining us today. Thank Woo-hoo. you so much for showing up. Thank you. Great. <laughs> to be here <laughs> this is over yet for this craziness this that we yet. do <laughs> whoa and now the news all right so let's get started by going directly to the only person equipped to comment on this first story about something <laughs> called the lone ranger mr men and gay as uh, the oldest person on team slice oh and now you were born no. wrong no. No. wrong no. 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 wrong no, no. Actually, I'm not the oldest. But we're pretending he is for the humor in this story. <laughs> okay, then. Let's go. <laughs> Done. Can, can I finish? Okay. So, oh. knowing you were born shortly after dirt was invented, was this Tonto, ah! Tonto and Lone Ranger thing some work of art you and your friend Shakespeare co-wrote? No. Oh, what is wow. this we speak of? <laughs> oh, I haven't. You know what? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no There's comment. His review. No comment on that. No. <laughs> so, did you watch it on TV back in the I day? I did watch. I did watch it back in the day. And on Keith TV. over there, not on a microphone, is raising his hand because he also watched it. Because yeah. he is the oldest person in the room. He was around before it. dirt was invented. Mike is slightly do, shortly no, after. No, I do remember. I do remember watching it. I mean, it really was. I watched it back when it was in the old black and white because I that's did. all we had was a black and white TV. And because it was only in black and white. Yeah, yeah. it was only in black <laughs> and white. But okay. I mean, it's. It, I remember watching it. And I watched I, it all the time. Yeah, loved I liked it. it. I liked Wild Wild West. Better. That was my favorite. That was, I was my never that was my Ranger. show. Yeah, that was my yeah. show yeah. over and, over Lone Ranger. And they already far. screwed that up with a horrible movie. So hopefully uh, they yeah. didn't screw oh. up Lone Ranger, right? Because they had a two hundred and fifty million dollar production budget, right? So the <laughs> new and improved Lone Ranger is coming at us, and uh, pff, you know the trusty sidekick is Captain Jack Sparrow this time around. Yeah, but at least <laughs> the Lone Ranger is not played by Will Smith. Oh, that okay, is true. okay, everybody, be quiet about him. I. Okay. Loved yeah, that Wild Wild West movie. Bowie. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, Bowie. let's watch, watch the video. Bowie. Let, let, let's watch the video and then we'll talk about it. I want to show you something. From the time of Alexander the Great. No man could travel faster than the horse that carried him. Not anymore. Imagine time and space under the mastery of man. Power that makes emperors and kings look like fools. Whoever controls this controls the future. There come a time to Mosavi. One good man must wear a mask. I 
I am really looking forward to this, I think. I mean, I do not see anything in there that I don't like. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to be action-packed. It's going to be fun. I've seen enough trailers of it now that it's going to be a nice little reimagining of of the Lone Ranger. I think. I may be the only person I know that's not excited. Really? I'm not. But no, I don't. You're, you're, you're I know. I'm not excited. Because everybody else I've talked to has I'm, been. Yeah. Chuck. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. not. What's not that? The what's 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 with us poo pooers? Why are we not excited? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Even I I'm think it's excited. Be, I, it's, I I hate to say it. I think it's because of Johnny Depp. Really? Oh. Yeah. A little. Oh, you're experiencing it, depth fatigue. Exactly. I have depth, fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> depth fatigue. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, well, I, I, I can just hear a listener calling in on that now. Oh. Have you got depth fatigue? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be the next multiverse. There's an ointment for that. There's actually, I, I think that actually needs to be a commercial now. Yeah, I, I, I want to say that's the next multiverse. I think that's your okay, next, so next bit. <laughs> well, and, 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 and for me, I just I wasn't a big big fan of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean to begin with. The first um, one was fantastic. Yeah, um, I yeah. agree. Yeah, but also, I, I, honestly, I guess the other thing for me is Lone Ranger is not something that, in my mind, should be overdone. Ah, uh, it looks overdone. Mm. Well, everything. I mean, that's the thing nowadays. Yeah. I'm with yeah. you. All okay. right. Well, classic Star Trek writer David Gerald got a new gig. Woohoo! The famous writer has been reduced to creating content for online <laughs> distribution. Oh, my God, that sounds like us. Yeah, I was going to say. Wrong uh, with that. Come, that's another that's wrong right, thing I, to do. I resemble that. Hey, Gerald, come on over. Slice needs you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, actually, he is joining the production staff for Star Trek Phase 2. Cool. Nice. Uh, now, David Gerald, we all know he penned the big classic, The Trouble of Tribbles, mm-hmm. and he's going to be a showrunner for this fan project. Project. Now, this isn't the first time that Gerald has been involved with Star Trek Phase 2, uh, because apparently he does have the right vision for it because of his background as a Trek and sci-fi writer. Uh, Gerald is a Hugo and Nebula Award winning author of The Martian Child, The War Against Chore, Jumping Off the Planet, The Man Who Folded Himself, and other sci-fi bestsellers. And of course, he wrote probably what is arguably one of the most popular Star Trek episodes uh, ever, and that was The Trouble with Tribbles, mm-hmm. while he was still in college. Since then, he's also written scripts for Star Trek, the animated series, Twilight Zone, Babylon 5, Land of the Lost, Sliders, Tales from the Dark wow. Side, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. On right? and on right? and on and on. Yes. Holy cow. So, but we can say is, Mr. Gerald, from all of us here at Slice, congratulations on making the web a slightly better place. There Yay. you go. Awesome. And with that, let's do a little bit of multiverse. Ooh. Covering all the news throughout time and space. This is the Multiverse News. Hello, I am Nigel Blackwood. And I'm Lance Neutron. And this is the Multiverse News. In our first story, after a strange accident involving an automobile and a police box, authorities are now looking for an eyewitness known only as the Doctor. Police are asking for your help in finding this man. So if you see someone who appears to be in his late 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, or 60s, with gray, black, brown, or blonde hair, which he wears straight, curly, closely cropped, or perhaps medium to shoulder length, and is wearing a hat, or not wearing a hat and carrying a cane or umbrella, or no cane or umbrella and is wearing a small or medium or large bow tie, unless he's wearing a loose or tight straight tie, or a cravat or no tie over which he wears a long scarf, or a medium scarf or no scarf at all under a beige, gray, brown or black blazer, or possibly an overcoat or leather jacket, please contact the authorities. We will have more news after this message. Ah, it's like I died in glorious battle and went to Stovacor. The blood is so warm. My rubber ducky will destroy the weak Federation boat. Get him, ducky. Kapla. You know, Clyde, people who switch to Psycho Insurance sure are happy. Really? Well, how happy are they? Happier than the Klingon in a bloodbath. Welcome back. Attempting to cash in on the success of the zombie apocalypse survival books, Dr. Connor McDuncan has published a book on how to survive a Loch Ness monster apocalypse. Now, we're lucky enough to have him on the line right now. Dr. McDuncan, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, Min. Doctor, could you tell us what is the best advice for surviving a Loch Ness monster apocalypse? Stay away from lakes! Ah, thank you for the advice, Doctor. Well, Lance, you don't see things like that every day, do you? Nigel and Lance banter before the next story. Oh, I wasn't supposed to. 
And finally, it would appear that even more extravagant IRS training videos have surfaced, this time in the form of a series of horror films with titles such as The Amityville Home Equity Loan, Rosemary's Dependent, Tax Lien on Elm Street, April the 14th, uh, The Adjusted Gross Omen, American Werewolf in London's Foreign Earned Income Exclusion, The Blair Witch Project's Travel, Entertainment, Gift, and Car Expenses, Cabin in the Woods Residential Rental Property Tax, World War 1040 EZ, and The Texas Chainsaw Auditor. That's the news, and we take you back to the Draco Vista Studios, where your donations are tax-deductible. SliceofSciFi.com Hey Slicers, Steve from Wisconsin here. Wondering if you've been keeping up with the latest season of Falling Skies by any chance. I had been enjoying it and I enjoyed last season, uh, but I'm fearful that they may have jumped the shark last night. That's the, uh, the uh, June 23rd episode. I won't be sure until I see next week's episode, but I get a bad feeling about some of the events towards the end of the episode. I have yeah, I, I'm caught up, and I don't want to spoil for others, but I will say I'm with him. Mm. Um, I'm a little like, eh, really? I hope they're. We we'll, uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, it's been an uneven show, right? Like oh, I'm still truly. in it yes. because it it's up and down, and when it's yeah. up, it's really good. But I uh, I am skeptical. Yeah, sadly. I haven't seen season three yet. My DVR kind of wigged out. It started out, out pretty like good. It started out pretty two, good. So I gotta go get them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's me. I got to read it. <laughs> Duh. So we're going to follow up on our recent interview with Tom Gray of Stanley's Cosplay Piano, which if you haven't seen it, you really got to go to sliceofsci-fi.tv and watch it because it's super cool. And of course, ooh, apparently my cosplay reports from last year's Phoenix Comic Con were kind of mm-hmm. popular. So they Slice were. is moving forward to bring you more cosplay action. Today, we're thrilled to introduce you to two, count them, two new contributors to Slice of Sci-Fi, all the way from London, England, a pair of brilliant filmmakers, Nick and Gary, who make their content available on YouTube under the moniker of Sneaky Zebra. Here's our first Sneaky Zebra music video report from last month, Comic-Con.
shaking earthquakes every time we land. Cause stopping ain't an option or a part of the plan. Fools get to film it while I'm running on jet fuel. Now pay close attention cause I'm ready to let you know what I'm all about, child. I got that sound that you come to love. And I'ma stay fly till the day I die. Spitting fresh to death from above. Get it, David F, man. You don't stop. David D. That is some amazing some cosplay. Some of the best cosplay, cosplay yeah. stuff in there. Cow. That's some of the best I've ever seen. I mean, yeah. the, I'm the, very impressed. The Spider-Man and the Doc Octopus. That was, that very was good. incredible. Wow, yes. The David Tennant, the, the, the doctor was incredible. Really good doctors. Really yeah. good doctors. Oh, Kudos to the Holy people who put that together. Yeah. That was oh, a lot of work. No lovely. kidding. Beautiful stuff. And if you're... Mickey of, Zebra! Of course, you are missing out by, if you're not watching mm-hmm. the video, go to SliceSciFi.tv. We, I know we say it all the freaking time, but folks... Because it's this, true. It's true. We it's say really it for where your you benefit. Go. Yep. There were we Power Rangers, you guys. We want you to have the cool stuff. Absolutely. What about you? Yeah. So this next story makes the third week in a row that we've got you some Lego news. <laughs> <laughs> Without commentary from Brett Philippe. Which is weird. It yeah. almost seems like a moot subject. But as Pink Floyd says, here's one last brick in the wall. And I promise <laughs> we will cut back on the Lego love. So, oh, okay. And there could be no greater display of Lego love than a wedding. So how about a Lego wedding dress? Seriously? Mm-hmm. Really? Japanese designer. Wow. Oh my God. cow. Ri Hosoki took uh, nuptial fashions to a whole new level when he crafted a wedding dress out of Legos. That's that is That's incredible. Amazing. Oh my gosh. I, wow. I, that looks painful. It looks very painful. And, How heavy is it? Well, yeah. that's a good question. I don't think it's very flexible either. So it's, who knows? Um, but no word yet on if the Lego dress will be the season's next big trend <laughs> for geeks who are trying to tie the knot or how much a similar dress would set you back. So it might also make that first dance look just a little bit awkward. It's super wow. cool. Looking, it looks scratchy. It is just a very little cool. bit. You know, you don't want to be dancing around seeing little bricks just kind of popping off. Right. <laughs> That's kind of what I was envisioning. Yeah. <laughs> well, we might not be completely over with the Lego stuff. I think I, I have. I think we need to be. I have a I have a Lego thing coming up maybe in a few weeks. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll, they're still putting the final details on whether or not that's going to happen, but stay tuned. Okay. It's a guy that I actually met while I was interviewing Jeff Nutkin so, ah. at, at his event. So I'll have more on that as that develops. So there you go. <laughs> cool. Right. Time for another review of future stories you'll hear on Slice, but you heard it here first. Just like last week, we will start with a correction to a future story that hasn't happened yet. Say what? Oh. I'm confusing myself. <laughs> <laughs> but News that actress Sarah Gaddon had been cast for the upcoming Amazing Spider-Man 2 followed on the heels that actress Shailene Woodley had left the role of Mary Jane Watson. Many outlets, including Slice, reported that Gaddon would take over the role of MJ in the sequel installments. That is not the case. Gaddon tweeted that she is in the cast but is not playing MJ. She won't reveal who she's playing just yet, making her another actress whose role in the sequel is being kept super secret. Well, mm. yeah, there was no actual confirmation as to who she was going to play. But it was just assumed. Everybody assumed she was going to play MJ because of the timing of it all. Well, and right. she kind of looks a little bit yeah. like an MJ, right? So... Um, Then on Friday, July 19th in San Diego, Marvel Television will introduce fans to their first live-action television epic with their new ABC series. I'm so excited. Squee! Squee! Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Featuring a panel with executive producers Joss Whedon and Jeff Loeb. The show will be spotlighted at the Marvel Entertainment booth on both the San Diego Comic-Con Convention Center floor with 
special pr- surprises to be announced. Oh, and, oh God. Very cool. And the, yeah. I know. I, I, I'm yeah. so happy. I'm so happy that S.H.I.E.L.D. is coming out, but I'm still asking the question and I'm still dying to hear whether or not in 2014 in Avengers 2 if we're going to actually see Coulson. Because they we never got confirmation that he's really dead. I don't. I don't. I mean, there's any number of things. Ways it will they be explained go. in the pilot. Yeah, it will be explained <laughs> in the pilot. You it's think supposed so? to be resurrected. I love that. Actor. It's already been said. Uh, uh, yeah. Really, it yeah. has been it's stated. Been yeah. Yes, it has been confirmed yeah. by yeah, uh, both Joss Whedon and by. Um, so uh, it'll be by, actually converted. Oh, yeah, so. they're actually going to discuss it in the pilot. So there will be some kind of resolution as to what the heck happened to. Um, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that's then. I'm a happy guy. <laughs> I cannot wait for this thing. It's going to be great. <laughs> Well, for the upcoming fourth Jurassic Park film, yes, it's still on, people. Mm. Oh, for Director Colin Trevorrow plans to take audiences back to the original island, and this is different how. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And will reportedly feature underwater dinosaurs. Okay, that is new. And it'll be the first <laughs> Jurassic Ooh. film to be shot in 3D. Oh, and by the way, Yum. Jurassic Park 4's 2014 release has been <laughs> shocker. Again, again, postponed again, for well, further development of the project. Oh, shocking, I know. Yes. No, so it isn't. Not su- not surprised in the slightest. Uh, yeah. Well, the long-awaited sequel to Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog. I'm looking forward to that. We'll have to wait uh, a little mm-hmm. bit longer. Yeah. Joss Whedon's a busy guy, people. Mm-hmm. Really, Curse you, Joss Whedon. It's all right. He'll, he'll probably shoot it in 12 days at his house. <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> well, actor Nathan Fillion says that Joss Whedon and several of the members of the original cast and crew were ready to begin prepping the Dr. Horrible sequel this summer. But with Whedon working on the new Avengers movie, there may not be time for Dr. Horrible right now. And so, so not entirely surprised. But, you know, I'd rather have Joss wait and do it right than rush yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. So. I'm still going to cry a little bit. Yeah. Um, the Terminator, speaking of sequels and the like, is getting ready to go toe-to-toe with the undead. That's right. Arnold Schwarzenegger has signed on for the upcoming zombie movie Maggie as an actor and a producer. The Governor has an array of other upcoming projects as well. He will appear in Escape Plan this fall, and next year he can be seen in Breacher and the third Expendables. Third Expendables. Yeah. I, 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 my head is going to explode. And Take your meds. Take your meds. But wait, there's more. <sighs> he will also be working on the bodybuilding drama Pump, which was <laughs> recently oh sold to Showtime. <laughs> God, yeah. there is no. So, so, and when is the bodybuilding zombie drama coming out? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, that's exactly what they said. Yeah, it's gonna be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna lift the barbells oh. in their arms, rip exactly. off. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also hitting theaters tomorrow is the animated sequel to Despicable Me. Yay! 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 The original was a solid hit for 20th Century Fox animation, and this sequel finds more of Gru, the reformed evil genius from the first film, his adopted daughters, and of course, the Minions. Woo-hoo! The Minions. Best oh my part. gosh, the, the new part. TV the spot part. where they're dressed up like the village people? Yeah. Amazing. The, so fun. I love it. The scary part about Despicable Me is the Minions are, are, as, uh, are the best part of the movie, just like Scrat is the best part of Ice Age. Ice Age. It's true. Yeah. It's it's sad, but it's true. Well, award-winning author Neil Gaiman's Sandman series delved into the world of nightmares. Mm. Apparently, the nightmares are real because Gaiman hates the script that's floating about. Not a good thing. An adaptation of Sandman has been in the works for a long time, though, and most notably one for television. Mm. But due to the Mm. film's wide scope and large cast of characters, television seems like the best home for the series. Sort of makes sense. Yeah. But updates about the show are far and few between at this present time. That makes me nervous. Yeah, you know, I I remember seeing him at Comic-Con in the late 90s. He said the movie script at that time was like, there was a good Sandman and a bad Sandman, oh, and they were Lord. having some galactic battle. And <laughs> oh, oh my wow. gosh, no! Oh. That sounds, that's, that's okay. That's, that's a little sad. terrifying. Oh. That is terrifying. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, well, I tell you that. Well, that's that's it for sci-fi on the horizon. There you go, folks. Yeah. See, uh, we ended on a bit of a downer. I'm so sorry. Yeah, oh, it's one, all right. one thing. Here, one, everybody one can look thing. at this picture of minions. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, there's one thing that we I, didn't... I do have got one thing to, to add, uh, and we talked about this uh, in between shows. But for people who watched um, In the Flesh, there is going to be a series two. 
Yay. It's going to be sometime next year, and BBC has already announced that it's going to be an expanded season run, so it could be anywhere from 6 to 10, 13 episodes. We're not entirely sure. Awesome. Okay. Cool, cool. I was going to say, um, one thing that we did miss this week is we didn't get our um, Skywatch report in. Vicious Observer, yes, we miss you. Yes, I know. Sorry. And we have a little bit of time here, so why don't we actually run it now? I know it's a little late for some of you folks, but hey, there you go. At least we'll get some of it On out the tail there. end. Right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Trying something new, getting everyone on the same page moving forward. If you haven't seen Energy from Space or Part 2 listed below, you're going to be lost. Watching both background videos takes about 15 minutes. Latest IRIS mission, delayed in launch until tonight, will be on live TV and many NASA scientists are expecting to see the unexpected when they analyze the interface region. Electric Universe proponents here will likely be less surprised. Interesting news out of France. The Corot satellite damaged in November 2012 by solar plasma is officially unrecoverable. will be set to re-enter the atmosphere for a fiery demise to be announced later. If you are bored, officials are asking for our help with tropical cyclone pattern recognition. This is very cool if you get a chance to follow the link I've provided. Tropical storm south of Mexico, unbelievably with another developing behind him. This is odd because the Pacific was supposed to be quiet versus the Atlantic. The Atlantic's only storm so far trekked across Central America from the Pacific, and this would make number four off the west coast. New Zealand taking that rain as expected. Southeast Australian coastline's going to get it next. Power low in Europe still stalled and bringing storms all the way north now to Finland. Major stories in the U.S. as I share Weather Online's expert weather charts. First, the low in the east is a trash bin for heat, moisture, and energy. Severe watches tonight are widespread. Also notice this huge low stuck south of Alaska. For those who didn't catch the arc storm discussion, look it up for your edification, but use this spelling with the AR standing for atmospheric river. Last but not least in the US, there is nothing in the desert and no man needs nothing. The drought that goes beyond extreme to the classification of exceptional is about to take a shot spreading further west through Arizona. These areas aren't exactly tropical rainforests, but they are drier than usual, and a powerful high-pressure cell settling in will keep the rain out. Ramp temperatures near 130 degrees Fahrenheit, yes, almost to 130, and it will extend the drought. Second gamma burst in two days. This one came from near the celestial equator in the Serpens constellation. If you're looking for a celestial reference, sunrise in the east currently heralds setting of Serpens in the west. Flaring is really making us maunder type shutdown slash ice age trend proponents look good, eh? Forgive my jest. I do indeed lament the lack of flaring continuing to not expand our atmosphere. Good polarity here, but she needs to develop. Solar wind is quiet. Density calm and orange with speed fading in yellow. No magnetic disturbances at all, but expect solar wind to get a bit feisty soon from the coronal hole stream already on its way to Earth. Speaking of which, I've had many questions as to why there's no watch with this coronal hole. Well, first of all, the day the hole crept center disk, we did take that 6.4 in the North Atlantic. But since June 21st, there has been no significant geocentricity. That doesn't end until July 1st. And also, as I just stated, there's no geomagnetic instability or energetic flux. And the umbral field has also been shut since that quake. Clearly, as the coronal hole stream arrives, planets come together, and the northern coronal hole faces Earth, we will have another shot at a better watch. But transequatorial alone is not enough. Until then, minor focus on Indonesia taking the two biggest quakes of the day within miles of one another and make this two above average quakes from the U.S. Washington on top this morning. Got a plasma tornado on the sun to show you, incoming active regions, and some other stellar shots. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.
All right, and with that, that's going to do it for this show. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's All it. Right. We're done. No. We're done? Really? Yeah. That's it? Okay. No goodbyes, nothing. We're no, just bu- done. No. no goodbyes or nothing. Okay, thanks, everyone. Get out. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck, for joining us this week. It's been awesome having you in the studio. Yay!